is about two and a half seconds. Alrighty, some racers, if you want to have some more filling in your wheel as you're racing out there on the track, or Forza Motorsport 8, it's 2023 model uh, edition. This is PC only. Uh, with the Sim Pro, I'm using a Sim Magic Alpha U, that is. Here are my settings. There were some requests for this uh, as well. I do have a older video, some preferred force backs, uh, feedback settings for Forza Motorsports 8. Uh, to me, it feels pretty, pretty dang good at these settings, but I have uh, evolved it a little bit since then. So, you're going with uh, the, the feedback settings here. We'll just start off with the SimMagic, uh, SimMagic SimPro Manager itself. I've got force feedback at 90% of the 23 newton meters. If you're using an alpha at 15 newton meters, of course, leave this maxed. And if you're using a mini, leave this maxed as well. And if you're using a mini, you're going to want to make this 100% as well. Maybe for the alpha, you'll want to run 100%, test it and see. Uh, but generally, you want to set your force feedback in game first to where you're not clipping. Every time I, I select a new car that I'm going to play with, I will run through what you saw in the beginning of this video uh, where the steering torque is. I will run through that and start adjusting my force feedback meter in the game per that car uh, until I get it within about an inch and a half from the top top line or whenever it starts feeling really dead because some games, some cars will feel very dead feeling. In other words, it'll uh, feel numb in the steering wheel and you're still about two inches from the max peak torque line there. Uh, and, and those tend to be front wheel drive cars is what I noticed, like Audi TT and, and some other front wheel drive cars. Well, Audi's an all wheel drive, but some of the other cars, it tends to feel too dead in there. So I'll have to knock down the force feedback uh, to get some, some uh, granule feel in the wheel. So keep that in mind. Now your GT3 cars and uh, Formula cars, those work really good. At, well, all of them work really good with the setting you see here, but uh, in, in, in game settings, I may have to play with it, but I'll get to that. So I don't need any smoothness. It's a pretty clean game, actually. Uh, the uh, rotational speed maxed and force uh, the feedback detail at 20. Mechanical damper off. Friction, I like to run 7%. That's just my personal preference. You could run this off as well. Remember any of these three that you run will add some resistance in this wheel uh, for rotation. Inertia, mechanical inertia I run zero and feedback frequency nine. Actually works fine around five. I've just been testing nine to see if I see much of a difference. But five to five to nine is fine on here. Just say go go with nine, you'll be happy. I've been testing nine and I haven't had any problems with it. So keeps keeps everything nice and smooth. And, and brings the details out in the track very well. So now that is the uh, Sim Pro Manager settings. Let's look at actual in-game settings. There's the in-game settings. Now, keep in mind, I am in the car itself right now. This particular car is a Alfa Romero, like a four-door sedan car, one you just saw in the race. <clears throat> and feedback scale on here is 65 on this one. Being a front-wheel drive car, I tend to get too much of a dead feeling on it. 65 felt great for this particular car, so that's what I end up running. Uh, I don't have any clipping issues as well with it. I could actually run it on up to 80% uh, and, and still not have any clipping issues, but the wheel felt too dead to me, so I uh, bumped it on down to 65. And actually, even at 75, which is normally what I would recommend to start with, well, that is what I recommend to start with. I recommend any car you start with, slide it over to 75, and go out on the track with a practice session and see how you like it. If it feels too dead to you and you're not getting any good feeling when you're loading up the the tires in a curve, on straightaway, it doesn't really matter. When you're loading it up in a curve, under load, especially with say, if you don't have any good feedback through there under braking, because uh, when you're under braking and you're in a curve, uh, it'll load the tires up more as well, uh, more so than it would under acceleration. But if you're not getting that granular feel, 
uh, you want to bump this feedback down a little bit here uh, to go with it. This game's a little bit more finicky uh, with force feedback than their actual sim racing games are. This being a sim cage, but it is a uh, it does allow you some leeway in it as well. Uh, but obviously, you set this as high as you possibly can to where you like how it feels, and you're not clipping, uh, which is the line of the steering torque that you saw in the beginning of this game that I had turned on. I see it kind of fluttering across the uh, across the screen there, and you basically want to keep it within inch and a half, two inches from the very top top line, right? The middle line is average and the medium. If you're just going straight away, and as you load it through the curves, it's either going inch and a half from the top, or if it's going to the right, it's inch and a half from the bottom. So that, that's the that's your little fun setting you want to keep it at. And so that's all the force feedback you need here. Now, I will say save that. If you go to your global settings now, you can change it all in your global settings as well if you want it to. Let's say sorry about that settings. If you want to do it here. By all means, go ahead and do it here. Of course, keep all your dead zones at zero. But when you come over to your to it, force feedback scale, I leave this, the global setting at 100. And like I said, I adjust it individually per car because every car is a little bit different. Some of them I need to run it low. Some of it I can run to 100. But mostly all of them, I start at 75%. So if you wanted to just fool with it at this point here, then you go ahead and set this at 75% and the rest of my settings I have here. You'll be good to go. Just keep in mind, you may have to adjust this a little bit uh, to get a little bit more power out of it or feel through the wheel or take some of that deadening out of it. But I do, I do recommend tuning it within the uh, per car itself so you don't have to chase your tail with this all the time. Uh, Self-aligning torque is 80. These two are the most important uh, as far as uh, what you'll change on the fly all the time. The self-aligning torque, 80 to 100. Don't ever go above 100. You won't need it. On this uh, on this wheel base, most cars work fine at 100, but I've found a lot of your front wheel drive cars, like Audi TTs or which all wheel drive, and then uh, some of your uh, bigger front wheel drive cars, it's a little too high. The self alignment is is too too tough, basically to uh, adjust. So you'll notice that because when you're going down the straightaway, the dip into the curve, you'll be fighting this wheel and it won't feel natural to you like a normal power steering type car would feel. Now, if you have an Indy car or something that has no power steering, then yeah, that would make sense to you, but most cars, all cars have power steering besides some of those race cars. So uh, you might wanna turn this one down to 80. You won't need to go less than 80, but uh, 80 is a great starting point. Uh, if you want a little bit more self-alignment, just start bumping this up uh, to, to a little bit higher level, no more than 100. Mechanical trail, 150. Nomadic Trill 50. This is uh, mechanical, is just like the what's what you see here. Like, I won't explain all this to go deeper. I have another video uh, that you can go check out on the Forza settings that explain all these settings a little bit deeper. So, but for now, 150, Nomadic 50, Road, Roads, Fill Scale 40, Load Sensitivity 60. Uh, these three, Wheel Center, Wheel Damper, Center Spring Scale, and Dynamic. Damper behavior, zero. Steering, sensitivity, and linearity at 50. And that's it. That's all the settings you need. Go forth and prosper, my friend. So, but uh, this is what I enjoy a lot of this particular game. Every car feels very dynamic to me. I get a lot of feeling through the wheel itself, especially with this Alpha U. So check it out. Let me know in the comments if you like these settings or if you had to adjust it. Keep in mind, force feedback is... A personal type thing, not everybody likes the exact same thing. I myself like a nice pneumatic tire where you can feel on the tire squish and become part of the road, getting feedback granule feel through the tire. No numbness, I don't like that at all. And uh, just a nice pneumatic, if you're bumping over curves, you feel them, uh, you feel the compression of the rubber as well. So that's what I look for uh, in settings. So hope this is helpful to you. Till next time, I'll see you on the track, I'm out.